Hi, I'm Scott. Welcome to Synth Stuff. Today we're going to be talking about waveforms inside the Novation Summit, and we're going to have a look and see what those things look like as we listen to them on an oscilloscope. So of course we have the standard sine, triangle, square, sawtooth waves that every analog synthesizer since the dawn of time has created. And of course the Summit can do all of that. And we'll have a look at those and see exactly what is being output for those. But we're also going to have a look at the custom wavetable uh, oscillators in the Summit and see what they're producing and what they look like and, and what exactly is it's doing. As well, the Summit can actually modify its waveform. So we'll do that, see what happens on the waveform as compared to what we're hearing with our ears. Okay, so you can see I have my oscilloscope rigged up here so that when I press a key, it shows up on the oscilloscope. And really, you could do this yourself. You can get oscilloscopes really cheap. I'll put a link to one in the description below that you can get on Amazon. You can either buy it as a, a simple to build kit or a pre-made one, and, and they're less than $50. Uh, and you just plug it into the output of your synthesizer or your mixer or wherever you can get an audio signal, and it will show you exactly what that audio signal looks like. So let's start off with an init patch on the summit and then we will go up here and switch it to uh, sine wave. So obviously a sine wave is gonna be the lowest uh, harmonic wave is just a curve. And as you can see, as we go higher in pitch, every time we go up an octave, we double in terms of frequency. The lowest one is obviously a very wide uh, waveform, but a very simple waveform that is a sine wave. We can modify that with the shape control on the summit. So let's try and do that and see what happens to the waveform. As you can see, it's starting to introduce some harmonics. It looks like it's almost acting as a wave folder. If you look at one little bit of the freak of the waveform there, it's kind of like just adding a little peak in there and then it rises and let's try it the other way which should just probably invert it doing the other way oh look at that that's doing something different entirely it's turning it almost into a almost like a sawtooth so interesting just from us the uh the sine wave what we can do there next we have a triangle very basic triangle now you'll notice it's not a perfect triangle because a perfect a geometrically perfect triangle is not what analog synthesizers can create because there are the, the vagaries of analog electronics that cause you know, certain things to cut off and slope and because when a waveform goes up, it takes time for the electrical component to adjust to the new voltage and come down. So if we're gonna emulate that sound with a digital wavetable synth like the Summit, we have to emulate those imperfections. So if you look, the, the, the um, triangle is not it's kind of, there are little bits of curves in there you can see. So that's the reason for that because if we had a perfect triangle, it wouldn't sound right. So let's try the shape control on this one. And you can see it's doing kind of the same thing. It's, it's bringing more harmonics into it and ridges. You can hear those harmonics starting to, to come in. Some really odd harmonics in there. Interesting what they do. Okay, sawtooth. Same thing goes here. You can see it is not. Actually, I'm going to the amplitude on that. It's just a bit high. Let's turn that down just a little bit. So you can see it's not a straight line by any means. And you can see where it comes up to that, that uh, point. It's not just suddenly dropping off. There's a little spike there. And that's what gives that sawtooth that little extra buzz. And that's intended by Novation to be there. So when Chris Huggett created this, he created these waveforms and wanted to emulate that little buzz in there to, because that buzz is what gives you some harmonics to work with in terms of resonance. We increase the resonance and then we bring down the filter. You can see that resonance coming in there. In fact, let's do that with a sine wave so we can see exactly what resonance does. So I'm gonna start with a sine wave. And of course, if I bring the cut down, cut off, it's gonna, it's basically gonna do nothing because there are no harmonics to really to cut off from the sine wave. However, at some point it's gonna reach the audio frequency of the cutoff and it's just gonna get rid of all sound. So let's bring it back up. 
I'm gonna bring the cutoffs part way down and we're gonna introduce some resonance and see what it does. On a sine wave, there we go. We can see it's just starting to get a little bit of peak there. If I bring the cutoff higher, you can hear that resonance kind of whistling in there. Interesting, so let's do the same thing again with a sawtooth. So there's the sawtooth with no cutoff filter applied at all. If I start cutting it down, you see that little peak goes away and it starts gradually turning it into a sine wave. So now we've got some cutoff. Let's bring in some resonance and see what it does. And you can see the individual resonant peaks starting to appear. That's really cool. On to the next waveform, which is the square wave. And you can see, once again, it's not a perfect square wave. There's lots of angles in there and clips and bits of resonance that have nothing to do with an actual square wave, but in analog electronics, this is what a square wave looks like, in, you know, at least in the 1970s and 1980s when sub subtractive synths were created. So let's reshape that and see what it sounds like. So basically, the shape for the square wave adjusts the duty cycle. Now this is where it gets interesting. If we go into this, the waveform and select more, and when we go into more, we get this selection right here where we can adjust between all of these different waveforms. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna step through these and see what they look like on the oscilloscope and then how we uh, reshape each of them. So the first one is obviously just a sine wave. Doesn't reshape much, a little bit of sine wave. Uh, the next one, random. Not truly random because that would be white noise, which a white noise would look like this where it's truly random from cycle to cycle. It's just all the time completely random. But in this one, it's actually the same wave over, cycled over and over again. That's why you have a buzz sound rather than an actual you know, noise sound. And can we shape this one? Yeah. Next we have zing. And then we have Tubi. That sounds like it would have some fun with resonance. Then we have octaves. That's almost an FM sound there. Then we have Wobbler. I should note that this, uh, this modification, this wave modification here, you can actually link that to the LFO. So if I link that to LFO one, See now, I'm not touching anything, but it's being modulated by LFO1. So you can include that as part of your sound design. All right, next we have chords. Interesting. Then we have didgery. Then harsh. Next we have organ. So that's interesting. So it's, it's just an organ tone and the shape control brings in more or less harmonics or stops. You can see all the way left. And as we bring in more and more, you can hear the, the uh, harmonics come up. Next we have electric piano. Then we have 
Vox Ui. So it sounds like a formant filter and the shape control is adjusting that formant filter. Next we have Vox Yai. Another simulation of a formant filter. Then we have Winds. Then we have Soft Cloud. Then we have String. Bass Organ. Acid. Buzzy. Carousel. Sounds like a carousel pipe organ. You can hear those harmonics coming in and out. Coral. Another formant filter. Climbing. Another one with harmonics coming in and out. Coin flip. Not much to that one there at all. Deep. Another one that sounds similar to formant filters. Dub. Goes from a sine wave into a harmonic sine wave with a bunch of peaks and a whole bunch more harmonics being added in. Interesting. E. More formant, filter, formant filters. Eris. Flame. Further. Lots of harmonics coming in and out of there. Glass saw. Glassy. Granular. Grime. Grow. Heavy. Hedge. Hungry. Ladders. Lead. Modeling. Modem. Monster. Screech. C bass. Morgan. Interesting harmonics in that one. Spirals. Very evident octave harmonics there. Oh, no. Only in the lower end. On the bottom end, we go to third harmonics. Steel. Lots of modulation on that one. Sunrise. Swell. Not much there. 
thicker. Thinner. Tides. Tokyo. Tops. V chord. Variants. Vocaloid. Similar to some vocal formant filters there. Voweled. Weird Vox. Yeah. Then we have a bunch of user fil uh, user waveforms in here. Uh, I don't remember how many there are. One, two, three, four, ten, which I have not loaded anything into. I did at one time, and I cleared them out during a firmware upgrade and never put them back in. But you can create single cycle waveforms in there and put them in yourself. And that is the Summit Wave Table. And of course, the Peak has the same waves in it, and that is your palette that you can use to create sounds on the Novation Summit and Peak. Well, I, I kind of found that interesting and educational and, and just, I like seeing it with my eyes, what exactly the synthesizer is doing and how it relates to what I'm hearing with my ears. Uh, and particularly in terms of sound design, it gives me a, a, an insight as to exactly how it's producing the sound and where those harmonics are coming from and, and just exactly how I can use that in my own sound design. If you found that of any interest whatsoever, please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you thought. Click like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. You know, all that good stuff. Thanks for watching.